afternoon guys, I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. You know, typically if you set a trap in the woods and you bait it with some type of animal meat or guts, something that you have captured and disposed of the, you know, things that you don't eat, you're going to get some type of scavenger type animal. It's going to be a skunk, it's going to be a possum, it's going to be a raccoon. In this case we have a possum hung in a snare right here. I talk very heavily in the Pathfinder School about live food never spoils. This possum was alive. He's caught by the front paw. Now, this possum will not tear me up. He's easy enough to handle. I can take him back to my camp and dispose of him at will. I don't have to dispatch him right now. I can take him back to camp, leave him tied by this leg, and just cut my trap down, take it tied up at camp somewhere, and he's not going to go anywhere. He's obviously there, okay? So he's not going to leave. To handle a possum, they have their mouth open all the time like this, like they're very threatening and they're going to bite you. Okay? But they're actually pretty docile animals, especially during the day because they're nocturnal. So if I just turn his head away from me and grab his tail and pick him up, he's going to hang there. He's not going to try to climb up his tail and bite me. I can probably fiddle with this trap enough, if I'm careful with it, I can probably fiddle with this trap enough to even get it off his leg if I wanted to. Okay? But the fact that I've got him trapped and I've got this string on him, means that I can tie him up somewhere else if I want to. So in this case, what I would do is I'd reach up and get my trap, cut it, leave the string attached to his leg, carry him back to my camp, and process him when I'm ready to eat. Good afternoon, guys. Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. You saw we got a uh, possum that we had in a trap over here and we captured him alive brought him back to camp now we're going to process this possum so this video is going to involve the gutting and butchering of an animal so if you don't like that turn the video off now um, next thing I want to talk about is you know I've been all over the world and I've been in a lot of countries overseas the majority of people that I see butcher animals or tribes people that I've watched butcher animals use one of two tools to butcher an animal, a machete or an axe. I think that us as Americans are spoiled from butcher shop cuts of meat that are perfect and the way things are cut up and quartered out and things are always perfectionist and you go hunting you try to perfectly cut up your animal. We're not talking about that right now. What we're talking about is a self-reliant short-term or survival situation. You want to get the meat, you want to consume the meat. It's not time to be fashionable, it's time to be functional, okay? You cut the stuff off the bone and you eat it. The things that go to waste, you use for traps. So you can catch other small meals to consume, get that fat, get that protein, and move on. One of the things that I see a lot of comments about with small game is, you know, what are you going to do with the hide? Why didn't you save the hide? My opinion is that in a short-term self-reliant situation or a survival emergency, anything that's small game, the hide is not worth the time and effort it takes to put the energy and calories into bark tanning or brain tanning, things that all are going to take several days to begin with. If you have a large game hide, which you shouldn't have unless you just happen to cross it, because you have no business hunting big game in a survival situation, or a short-term search and rescue 72-hour scenario, then you might think about doing something else, but that's another video altogether. What we're talking about now is small game. So when I butcher this possum, I'm going to use an axe. I've got my Pathfinder knife and it's plenty sharp, but I'm going to be doing some boning on this thing as well, and I don't want to do that with my knife. There's no reason to cut bone with your knife if you've got an axe. That's why you have an axe, okay? As far as dispatching the animal goes, the most humane way to dispatch small game animals is a quick blow to the back of the head, okay? You can kill animals several ways in primitive fashion without a gun. You can slit their throat, very inhumane. You can stab them in the heart if their heart's bigger around than that, okay? When you're talking about small game, their heart's not bigger around than that most of the time. Good luck trying to stab them in the heart, okay? You do that with hogs and bigger animals like that. You don't do it with raccoons, possums. You don't do it with squirrels. You don't do it with rabbits. One swift blow to the back of the head will kill that animal. It will immediately separate their head from their spine. They have no feeling from the neck down. They have instantaneous brain trauma, and they die. That is the most humane way to kill an animal. So that's what I'm going to do today. Stay with me. We're getting ready to butcher a possum. Okay, so here's our possum. You can see he's sitting here all nice and quiet. Okay? 
Now he's nice and dead. No muss, no fuss. That's just nerves. He's done. I heard his neck crack and his skull split when I hit him with that axe. Okay, well this possum's got a pretty nice hide on him. And like I said, I wouldn't waste my time tanning something like this in a self-reliance or emergency scenario. But because we got a primitive class that we're going to have tomorrow, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to skin this thing out a little bit neater so that we can possibly use this hand, hide to tan with. He's still got a little bit of nerves going. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to string him up to go ahead and take his hide off and show you how to tube a hide if you're going to try to tan it. There's a couple different ways you can do that. You can either take the hide off in one solid tube or you can split it up the belly and have an open hide like we have the deer hide that we did in the salting the deer hide video. Um, with this one I'm going to go ahead and try to tube the hide for you and show you how that's done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple, I'm just going to get myself a couple of uh, loops here like I would make for snares and use these for the back legs. I'm just going to put one of these on each of his back paws right behind the right behind the back pad. Give myself a little bit of tie off too here. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other leg. Make sure and cinch that down good and tight. And give myself a little bit of tie off like I said. Now I'm going to take a straight stick like this. I'm just going to tie a piece of rope on in a triangle to hang it from. And I'm going to hang the possum from this stick to skin him out. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm just going to give myself a loop. Put it on one side of my stick just like this. Give myself some room to hang this by. Like this. And tie it off again. A couple half hitches will do it. I can get the cordage off easy that way. And save it for the next project. Make a snare out of it or whatever the case may be. I'll just tie that off so it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so this is what I'm going to hang this animal by to skin him out. Okay, so what I'm going to do, put this in the tree now. I'm just going to come around here and I'm going to wrap this triangle in the tree like this. Put it all the way through and come back on itself just like this. Now I'll put that in the tree and you can adjust that line around to where it's even and hang it straight for you. And then we can just hang our possum off of this to skin him out. We can pull him over here and just tie him off each side of this, just like this. Wrap it around there a few times and I can tie it off to the tail that's on this other side, just like this, on the square knot. And do the same thing with the other leg like this. Okay. We got him hanging there ready to go. Now I'm going to get him up in the tree a little bit here so that it's more comfortable for me to skin him and all I need to do to do that because I've got a slip knot in here or a self-tightening knot, I can just move that up to the level I want it and then drop it back down. That makes it nice and convenient for me to skin that animal. Okay, like I said, you know, in a self-reliant situation, you're going to do with what you have, okay? And for this exercise, I'm not going to use my knife. I'm only going to use my axe to process this animal with. 
and I keep my axe pretty sharp. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a circle around both sides of the leg here through the meat, just like this. All the way around on both legs. Just like this. Okay? Then I'm going to start to slice that this direction. Because what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to shuck this guy out of his skin. I'm going to go down to the butt here, and then I'm going to stop, okay? And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And I'm going to try to peel some of the skin away to give myself something to grab onto, just like this. Sometimes that skin is hard to hold on to. Possums have a lot of fat on them. Possum is an animal that you can use if you're looking for tallow. Possum's a good candidate for that as far as a small game animal because possums generally have a lot of fat. You can see that there's not a great big ton of meat on this thing. It is mostly fat. Great big chunk of fat right there. Okay. I got both of those legs basically stripped down pretty good right there. Now what I want to do is 
Like I said, I want to tube this guy. And now I want to cut across to the anus. And you can see the fat just dripping off of this guy. I mean, this guy has got a ton of fat on him. There is no question. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut across here. And basically, I'm cutting a tube here. So what I want to do is I want to cut clear across and open up this flap. And you can see all the fat just rolling off of this guy. And there's a ton of it. Look at that big layer of fat inside that animal. I mean, it's huge. more fat on this thing than there was on that deer. Look at that. Huge bunch of fat right there. Unreal. Right there, I just split that bone, that bone, the tailbone is right there. Okay, and I can feel it right there with my axe. Okay. What I'm going to do is, you're not going to save a possum tail like you can coon tails and squirrel tails, things like that, on the hide. So I'm going to end up cutting that off of there. Busted the hide right there just a little bit. That's okay. Look at the fat just dripping off of that guy. I mean, he has got a huge amount of fat on him. And that's all tallow or lard. We could render it down and figure out which one it would become. Never actually rendered possum fat before to tell you. It feels pretty soft at this temperature, so I would have to assume that it's probably lard. And once I get in between here, where I can get that tail up to the top that's where I'm going to cut the hide at is right in here okay and there's the tail right there and I can cut that off with my axe after the fact just like that and you can see this guy is just loaded with fat and not a whole lot of meat Look at the fat on that guy. I mean, basically you're just shaving chunks of fat to get the hide off of him. So again, that's one of those things. How much scraping do you want to do on this hide to try to save something like this for the value that you're going to get out of that hide? You know, you'd really have to do a lot of scraping in order to save this hide and tan it because there's just nothing but fat on it. It'd take a couple hours just to scrape that hide. Would that be worth it? Like I said, you gotta ask yourself, looking at all the fat on this animal, is that gonna be worth the time and energy that it's gonna take to try to process that hide to make something usable out of it 
because you got to scrape all that fat off of it first. Okay, and that's a lot of fat on that hide. Now we can pull that down as much as we can, just like this. Basically undress them. Use our axe a little bit along the way to help us out, like that. Some of that fat away, and I've cut a couple holes in this hide here and there. But at this point, now that I've seen how fat this guy is, I'm not really worried about the couple holes in the hide because I'm not gonna, there's no way I'm gonna save this hide and try to do anything with it. It's just way too much work to even teach somebody to mess with something like that. Okay, now there's a leg right there, and there's a leg right here. And we've got the whole back and the ribs right there's the top of the shoulders right there. We got the whole back of the animal here. So we've got him pretty well dressed down to the edible parts of the meat. We can turn him around here and look, feel where his legs are, and we can peel that down with our hand just like this. Yeah, it exposes all of that, all of that hide right there, down to the leg. Okay, and now we just cut that at that point because I'm going to sever that leg off anyway. Same thing on the other side. I get that leg freed up, pull down to the neck. This is all the neck right here on the underside. Then pull that down. A little bit of blood coming out of there. All right, here's his other leg. Right down in here. Pull that down and pull it off. Do the same thing. Once we get down to that leg, we'll just cut that fur. And cut it around the head here. And if we turn that inside out, we basically have a tube to hide there that we could use to tan if we wanted to. All right, that'll be our tubed hide. But remember, we'd have to scrape all of this fat off of it to do anything with it at all. Now, once we're to that point, you know, we've done the butchering that we're going to do to eat this animal. So basically what we're going to do now is we're going to take and cut this leg bone down right here into the shoulder meat. 
just like this. And I'm going to remove that front leg. There's hardly any meat on that at all. The same thing over here. I'm going to find that joint, cut into it, and remove it. Just like this. Now, if I wanted to, if I was real desperate and I needed some food, you know, I could try to eat the meat off of that leg, but there's not a lot of meat on there. Like a front leg on a rabbit. There just ain't much there to be had. So. Why waste your time with it? It makes better bait for something else. And now all we're left with is the head and neck. And we can just chop that off with our axe real easy. Just like that. And at that point, we can gut it down, okay? So we've got the gut cavity right here in front of us. We just cut into that a little bit with our axe. Up here by the rib cage, we're not going to damage anything too much. You can see that liver poking out right there. I'm just going to cut straight down the rib cage with my axe, just like this. And open it up. You can see most of the guts are coming out right there. That way I'm not going to damage anything while I'm doing this. Then I want to cut the rest of that gut cavity open. To do that, I'm going to use the back of my axe. And just put my fingers in there and spread it open. And just ease it up just like that. until I get to the center of it there. And I'm just gonna split that open, just like that, on both sides. Okay. Right there's what I don't want in the meat at all, okay? That's the urine sac, I don't want that in my meat. So that's gonna go. So I'm gonna take that and cut it with my nax right now. I got it in my hand, nothing came out of it. It goes on the ground. And I'm going to come up here and look at all the fat inside this thing. Look at all that fat. That's all solid clumps of fat right there inside. Look at all the fat around the organs of that animal, okay? Because all those organs have, have spilled down here to the back side. So the only thing i got to worry about is this right here. Okay, and you can see it's poking up through the back side there. I'll squeeze that out of it so it's not on my meat. Then I'll pull it down straight out just like that pull that out now I don't have to worry about anything tainting my meat I can cut all these guts out of here just like this pull them straight down right there's the lungs okay Everything's on the outside of the carcass now. Okay, I've got two lungs right here. I've got the heart right here. The liver right here. Gallbladder, that's the other thing you don't want to break. That'll definitely taint your meat. Small, large intestines down to the urethra there. Cut all that out. If I was going to eat anything off of this thing, it would be the heart and liver and nothing else. All right. Basically, we've got a clean carcass now. All we have to do is go down. We'll go ahead and cut the rest of these ribs down, open all the way up, just like that. Now all we need to do is go down and clean this critter, but we got a lot of fat in here. Okay, so we can trim that fat out. If we're going to try to make tallow, we can trim some of that out of there. Okay, if we're going to try to make larder tallow. But if we're going to cook this thing, we might as well leave that fat in there, because that's great for us. If we're going to quarter it up or whatever, chop it off, split it up with the axe, and we're ready to go. But let's go wash it off and then we'll get it on the fire. Okay, so we took him over and washed him off in the creek real quick. And now 
basically I'm just going to cut through here down to the base of the spine on both sides just like that okay like I said function not fashion guys all right we're not looking for a per perfect butchering job here all right we're just looking to get the meat in the fire that'll cook the whole back strap and neck area right there I don't have to worry too much about it I can open that up a little bit more if I want to just like that on the fire okay if I want to try to process that tallow I can cut that out at this point or leave it doesn't matter as far as the two legs go all I'm gonna do with them is find the center right there and split them right down the middle just like that and they're ready to go we're ready to go to the fire All right, while we're cooking our possum here, you can see we've taken a little bit of that fat. We're rendering it down in the pan right now into an oil. Like I said, I think this is going to end up being more of a lard than a tallow because it's going to be soft at room temperature. But it's a very, very good oil you could use for a fat lamp. All right, well, we got some possum cooked up here. And this right here, I just tried a piece of it. It's unbelievable. I'm going to try to trim Jeremy a piece of this dark meat off of here. That's just real, real dark meat. Real good. It's hot though, man. Is it hot? I need a, a stick. Does it work? What I need. Well, that's a little bit more than a stick. Let me have, <laughs> let me have that stick right there. There you go. Let me have that. That's perfect. Just give us an impromptu skewer. Quick pointing device here. We can stab this thing with to hold it down. There we go. Maybe. All right. Try that piece right there, brother. Holy cow, man. That is some freaking amazing meat. Justin, you want to try a chunk of this? Sure. Maybe not too hot on dark meat, but it's real, real good, man. I mean, find you a good piece of meat here. It's got a lot of fat on it. I mean, there's a ton of fat on this thing. So i got to find you a good piece of dark meat here. I'm Dave Canterbury. This is Jeremy Janey with the Pathfinder School. And uh, glad you could join us for another video. This possum's really good. If you haven't uh, enjoyed a little possum in front of the fire, you don't know what you're missing. It's good dark meat. It's really, really flavorful. Um, it's a good resource if you can catch one in a self-reliance, long-term self-reliance, or survival situation. Appreciate you joining us for this video. We'll be back real soon. Thank you.